most nations fielded some sort of armoured car for reconnaissance during the Second World War. Some were custom designs, while others were just armoured superstructures fitted to existing car or truck chassis. These light vehicles scouted ahead of heavier formations, sniffing out the enemy's positions and searching out the terrain ahead of an advance. Today, thanks to the restless Kaiser from Modelling for Advantage, we'll have a look at the new Soviet BA-64 kit. This is the plastic BA-64 armoured car platoon for Soviet forces in Flames of War. It's a late war box set released as part of the Bagration forces for Soviets in 1944. The idea of arming a motor car with a machine gun dates back as far as the late 19th century. British inventor F.R. Sims built what he called a motor scout, mounting a machine gun on the front bar of a motorised quadricycle. By the First World War, the concept of armoured cars had developed into a workable machine of war. These started as improvised modifications mounted on touring car or truck chassis, but designs quickly became more sophisticated, often mounting machine guns in rotating turrets. Initially, these operated as mobile fire support for infantry, but post-war this role was filled by tanks. World War II saw armoured cars mainly used in the scouting and reconnaissance role, with vehicles like the US M8 Greyhound as well as the numerous British and German designs. The German invasion derailed Soviet development of a purpose-built armoured car design. A stopgap design was ordered utilising the existing chassis of the Gaz-64 Jeep. Smaller than its German counterparts, the influence of the Soviet SDKFZ-221 light reconnaissance vehicle on the Soviet BA-64 design is clear. The angled armour plates increased cost and complexity of manufacture, but helped deflect bullets and mine blasts. Having the wheels mounted outboard of the main hull also helped increase survivability against mines. The Jeep chassis had a good ground clearance and off-road performance, features the BA-64 would inherit. As the Gaz-67 Jeep became available, the BA-64 also moved to this wider chassis, which increased stability. This version was known as the BA-64B. BA-64s were usually armed with a single DT light machine gun in a small open turret. The gun mount could be elevated to engage aircraft. Some BA-64s were modified to mount the PTRD anti-tank rifle. Although production ended in 1946, BA-64s continued to serve in Russian and Warsaw Pact service into the 1970s. North Korean BA-64s saw action against UN forces during the Korean War. If we look at the back of the box, there's an image of a completed kit and an exploded assembly diagram. This is a very simple kit with just seven parts and only one option. The box contains four BA-64 armoured car kits and two unit cards. One unit card is for the BA-64 armoured car platoon, while the other is for a BA-64 OP, which allows you to use one as an artillery spotter. Let's look at the plastic. Each BA-64 comes on a single sprue of dark green plastic. This is a tiny kit and the parts count is low at just seven parts. The lower hull is two pieces, with the wheels mounted integral to the hull side pieces. This avoids gluing on separate wheel parts and the possibility of misalignment. There are locating tabs on these parts to guide assembly and to add strength. My only comment here is the tyre tread could stand to be moulded in stronger relief. There is light tread detail here which should dry brush OK, but it could be more pronounced. I think I said something similar about the Daimler armoured car kit's tyres. Other details on these parts include hatches, some tools and an exhaust and muffler. Next up is the upper hull piece. Here you can really see the angled armour plates. There's also a headlight moulded onto the front fender. You can't see it in this picture, but there is some slight flash on the fender here. Nothing serious, it would clean up easily. There are some moulded on tools, vent and vision slit detail here as well. The hull does put join lines on visible surfaces. Standard engineering practice for new battlefront kits. Keep an eye on this during assembly. The rest of the kit parts are the open top turret, a spare wheel, turret peg and two armament options. The standard armament is the DT machine gun, 
but the longer gun is the PTRD anti-tank rifle. Nice to have options. You can see the gun barrels are both over scale. This makes them look pretty chunky, but should improve the kit's survivability during handling play and storage. Realistically proportioned weapons would just be too fragile, and Battlefront likes to make weapons and similar parts robust enough to last. Overall, this is a simple kit that should build up quickly to join your Soviet forces on the table. Apart from some very minor flash and my comment on the shallow tread detail, this kit is well moulded and simple to build. Detail is generally sharp. All up, this kit is up to Battlefront's usual standard. Let's look at using the BA-64 armoured car platoon on the table. It's a tank unit with the spearhead special rule. This allows you to use these to probe ahead and expand your deployment area. Their motivation is a confident 4+, but they get a last stand of 3+, with the Soviet not one step back rating. They'll stick around when the going gets tough. But these are reconnaissance troops and their counter-attack rating is a 6. Close assault isn't their primary role. Being a later war unit, the platoon is rated as veterans with a 3-plus skill rating. However, their assault rating is 5-plus. Again, it just isn't their role. They are aggressive, which makes them hit on a 3-plus. They'll take risks other more cautious troops might not, making them an easier target for the enemy to hit. Armour is 1 for front, side and rear, with the open top turret giving a protection of 0. This is some measure of protection against small arms fire and shell splinters, but not much else. They are a wheeled vehicle, which is why the BA-64's tactical move is only 8 inches or 20 centimetres. Terrain dash and cross-country movement isn't much more. Even the road dash is only 20 inches or 50 centimetres. Wheeled mobility is also why the BA-64's cross is a 5+. Keep these out of difficult terrain. They're likely to get stuck. Most BA-64s are only armed with a DT machine gun. The stat line for this gives a 16 inch or 40 centimetre range, moving and halted rate of fire of 3 with an anti-tank of 2 and 6 firepower. Its main role is scouting, but it can put out some fire if it needs to. The gun is on an extendable AA mount in the turret, and it can fire self-defence AA, giving it a rate of fire 1 anti-aircraft shot at enemy aircraft attacking it. The optional stat line is for the PTRD-41 anti-tank rifle. Some BA-64s had this mounted in the turret instead of a machine gun. It also has a 16 inch or 40 cm range, halted rate of fire is 2 and moving is 1. Anti-tank is 5 with a 5 plus firepower. These will not stand much of a chance against any late war tanks, but might be useful against lighter vehicles. The PTRD just fires armour-piercing bullets, so it gets the no-HE special rule. This gives a plus one to hit when firing against infantry and gun teams. BA-64s are a support option for Soviet lists in Bagration, and they're cheap. Three BA-64s are just two points, five for three points, and seven for four points. At under two points each, you can afford to add a few of these to your list. You can also replace the DT machine gun with the PTRD anti-tank rifle on up to two BA-64s for no cost. The OP artillery spotter version is even cheaper at just one point. However, you must field a 76, 122 or 152mm artillery battery or a Katyusha Guards rocket battery to take one. Once you have the spotter in your force, it can spot for any friendly artillery unit. The OP is an independent team so it can't charge into contact or take an objective, and it's ignored for victory point calculations. So that's the plastic 15mm BA-64 armoured car from Battlefront. It's a tiny kit with just a few parts, but it goes together okay. These will be quick to build to give late war Soviet players some eyes and ears. This is a great little kit, but I don't play Soviet, so I'm not sure how these will go on the tabletop. Have you used them, or plan to use them? What's been your experience? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks once again to the Restless Kaiser and Modeling for Advantage for supplying this review kit. Your support is helping Fog of War viewers see a wider range of reviews.